Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to your JavaScript series. This video, we're gonna be talking a little bit about event listeners when it comes to modifying the DOM, primarily because oftentimes you're going to want to change something on, on your web page as a result of some event happening. We've done a little bit of this throughout the series, but this is uh, just a little bit more for some practice. Before we get started, please check out our sponsor. Are you looking for a JavaScript web development bootcamp? What about an iOS bootcamp? DevMountain offers classes online and in person with housing at no additional cost. Learn how to build real world applications and get a job in the industry through DevMountain's career centric program. Whether it's web development, iOS, user experience, or quality assurance, DevMountain has a class for you. Let them know I sent you their way and they'll give you $250 off the tuition. Link in the description. So let's take a look at our HTML. You can see in here we have a paragraph, an ordered list, and then a button. Now we've been able to attach event listeners to this button very simpler, sim uh, simply by saying document.getElementById. And this is fine, it works great. We might actually work with the button a little bit in this video, but I wanna actually work with our ordered list. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to access our ordered list first. So let's say let list, and we will do document.getElementById, and we will say, ordered list, and this needs to be in strings. So then what I wanna do is I just wanna console log this list, and it is an HTML collection with one ordered list. Now if we want to attach an event listener to an event, we need to have an actual node, not a collection. So what we can do is we can say, let our list, and we can assign it list index zero. Then we'll console log our list. Refresh this and we got our order list right here. Now some of this we don't really need so I'm just gonna get rid of everything that we're not working with right now. Doing a refresh and there we go. So we're accessing this ordered list right here. Now we should be able to say our list dot on and here we get a bunch of events. Now what we'll do is we'll do on mouse over and we'll assign this a function and we'll just console log like so doing a refresh each time I move my mouse over this list, you can see the number of times it's been outputted on the console increases. So we can do pretty much anything inside of this, just like any function. So for example, we could change the list by saying our list dot child nodes, and then we'll grab the first node, which will be this home. And you know, why not? We'll just uh, change it a little bit. We'll change the node value to house. So let's do a refresh. And when I hover over this, boom. <laughs> okay, it, it uh, didn't do quite what I was hoping. So let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at the HTML collection, which has our ordered list in here, and take a look at the child nodes. You can see I actually changed this one where I want to change this one. So that's where those stupid automatic text nodes can mess you up. Doing all this relative grabbing can be dangerous because if you ever update the HTML, all the numbers are gonna change. So I'd prefer in general to grab things by ID or class. That's a little bit more structured, a little bit more safe, but never hurts to practice with this. So we'll actually want to grab index one. Now do we refresh when we hover over it? Well, that didn't work either. <laughs> Looking at the structure, we actually need to go into the list item and then grab its child nodes, which is where we can get that text. So let's do this one more time. We'll go dot child nodes index zero dot node value, set that equal to house. Refresh, and there we go, now it's working. The alternative would just be use an ID, so you could say ID, whatever you wanna call it, we'll just call it home. And then inside of the JS, we could say document.getElementById, pass in home. We can also just use inner HTML and set that to house. We'll get rid of this one and do a refresh. And you can see that works just the same, but it's a lot cleaner and a lot easier to do. You can also do an on mouse enter and on mouse leave if you want it to change back when you leave. So for example, we could do something with this button here. Say document get element by ID. I think this has the ID click me. And then what we'll do is we'll assign this to a variable so we can reference it again. And we'll say button dot on 
mouse enter. Here we will reveal something, such as setting the inner HTML to revealed. So do a refresh, hover over this, it says revealed, but I want it to go away when we leave. So to do that, we can just say button dot on mouse leave and set this to a function. And then we'll do the same exact thing, but this time we'll put the original text, which is click me now, or maybe we'll even do something else. Hover over me. Now check this out. Go in, it says revealed, and then when we leave it says hover over me. So maybe that's a way you could do like some note cards or something if you want to study. You could reveal the answer, and then you could take the mouse off when you want to move to the next one. You can also affect other elements inside of the event listeners. It doesn't always have to be the same element. So for example, we could just say our list dot remove, and that'll just remove the list. So um, I should probably put that in one of these event listeners. So. I'll put that on mouse leave. So as soon as we leave the button, our list will disappear. Kind of useless, but just to show you guys. And there you go. So thank you guys for watching this video. In the next video, we're gonna be talking about something new. I think we're gonna be talking about, um, I don't know, DOM attributes or something. I don't know, I guess we'll see when we get there. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you in the next one.